Bryant, so I'm higher than anyone has before. Watch tonight as Sam begins and spreading his majestic wings on his flight to the top of the comedy world, the incredibly fantastic and funniest person alive, Samuel L. Bryant. <laughs> Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, how are we feeling tonight? It feels so good to be forming stand-up for all you lovely people tonight. It feels so good to be emceeing for my second year in a row. But I'm not going to lie, the biggest honor of all tonight is performing on stage with my beautiful girlfriend. She's over there, she's going to be performing a color guard routine just a little bit later. It is fantastic. She is amazing. Not only is she an incredible dancer, captain of the color guard team, but she can also speak fluent Japanese. She regularly has conversations with her mom and her Japanese-speaking friends in Japanese. Uh, not with me, though, because I do not speak Japanese, if you couldn't tell by the physical hints I possess. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, I know some Japanese words, but I know so few Japanese words, I can teach you every Japanese word I know right now. Konnichiwa, Ohio, Ichi ni, Tenshi no hani, Arigato, and Toyota. <laughs> I will now translate every word that I just said. Hello, good morning, one, two, angel wings, thank you, and Toyota. <laughs> As you could probably tell, those words do not equal a whole lot of conversation starters and, you know, ways to fill in a Japanese conversation. So when she starts speaking Japanese, I just know that's my time to tap out. <laughs> I don't feel too bad, though. I figure, you know what? She can talk to her mom, she can talk to her sister, she can talk to her Japanese-speaking friends. But her two best friends in the whole wide world, two white girls. They don't speak Japanese, I don't speak Japanese. We share that common bond. <laughs> or so I thought. We all go sledding together, and we see this little boy sled down the hill, fall over. <laughs> so everyone yells down, hey, are you OK? And he responds to what I thought was gibberish, turns out was Japanese, and the two white women just start speaking full-on Japanese to the kid, seeing if he's OK. I'm not saying white people can't speak fluent Japanese, but these girls were white. <laughs> One girl was a short blonde girl named Margie who worked at a Menchie's. <laughs> People, I'm less cultured than a short blonde white girl who works at a frozen yogurt place, and I'm not gonna lie, that hurts. <laughs> Speaking of women I sometimes don't understand, my mother... <laughs> transition but my mom she's another very important woman in my life but she does possess this thing that can be a bit annoying some of you may know what I'm talking about I call it story retelling <laughs> those of you may know what I'm talking about if you don't know story retelling basically means if you heard a story or are involved in a story they'll either change certain details or the moral of the story to make their point go across using that story I'll give an example so, I was making myself something to drink one time, and my mom comes over. She goes, hey, what is the gas in your car at? I go, it's about a quarter of a tank. So she asks, do you want me to fill it up for you? I go, sure, that'd be nice. She then asks, do you want to give me $30? <laughs> you all know the answer to that question. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> She then storms downstairs to my dad and goes, our son thinks he's too entitled to pay for his own gas. <laughs> Which is not true. Paying for gas is the least favorite part about getting gas. Getting gas is not the hard part, it's paying for gas. <laughs> I don't mind getting gas so much. When I pull up to the gas station, I'll turn off the car, get out of the car. When I realize that the gas tank is on the other side, I will go the full U-turn, <laughs> then get there, get out of the car, realize that I'm three inches short from being at the maximum extension of the gas thing, have to then turn on the car, inch it all the way forward, then get out and start pumping gas. I don't mind that. <laughs> I don't mind getting gas so much, I never use the hands-free option on the handle. I'll hold it the whole time, no matter the weather. I'll hold it like an idiot the entire time. Everyone else is playing on their phone, playing a game. I'm there, standing like an idiot, looking at my car, just going, I can't wait for this to fill up. I'll even count along to how many 
many gallons I have left. I'm like, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. I don't care. <laughs> the least favorite part about getting gas is the money part. Is what I would have told her in entirety if I wasn't too scared to say so. <laughs> because hell hath no fury like a mother scorned. <laughs> Hands down, the scariest parents you will ever have to deal with, though, are your boyfriend or girlfriend's parents. Hands down, scariest parents you'll ever have to deal with. Especially if you're a boy, because boys, you have the hardest job in the whole wide world when it comes to making nice with the parents. Girls, meet the parents once, twice, you're done, set for life. Guys, you are never gonna be done with that. You are under constant scrutiny, you will never be done, and until the parents or you die, you will be constantly under evaluation until one of you die. Just that way. <laughs> he gets it. Girls are gonna bring home a guy, girls bring home a car, parents evaluate them the same way. If they're going car shopping or they bring home a guy, the parents will evaluate each of those the same way. They'll look at the guy and go, mm, I don't like that one, that one moves too fast. I don't like that one, that's a little slow. I don't like that one, he's too old. And if you're some parents, I don't like the color of that one. <laughs> I remember when I met my girlfriend's dad for the first time. I had just come from a volleyball open gym. Two and a half hours of sweating and playing volleyball in basketball shorts and a t-shirt, and I was gonna meet her dad. But I did not know this. I show up to her apartment, the dad opens the door and invites me in and begins having a conversation with me, making me sweat even more. <laughs> he then gets the dreaded question of what do you want to do when you're older? Now people, I'm not gonna lie to you. My dream job would be to be a stand-up comedian. That's the dream job. I also wanna be a cop. So, I have developed an instinct where depending on who I'm talking to and who asks me this question, I will say cop over comedian if I foresee this going a terrible route. This instinct didn't kick in. And straight to the man's face, I said, I would like to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I saw the confidence fill his face, and then he asked, well, where are you gonna go to school to be a stand-up comedian? And I said, Harper. <laughs> Again, that wave of confidence rushed over his face. <laughs> And I could just tell he turned on that car evaluator mode, because as soon as I left, I could just imagine he turned to my girlfriend and went, Oh, honey, you, you can't choose that one. That one's definitely not going to work in a couple years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been wonderful.